Welcome to our coverage of ASUG Annual Conference and Sapphire Now 2014. We're in the ASUG News Studio, which is sponsored by our good friends at NTT Data. And today we're going to talk about sports analytics and the entertainment industry and how all those things are coming together and the very cool and innovative uses of technology that companies are doing. And couldn't think of a better guy to have in here than Jeremy Steerwall from NTT Data. Jer Jeremy, welcome back. Hey, okay, thanks, Tom. Good to be back again. We have. Uh, <clears throat> Actually, I'm hope no one ran some analytics on our golf outing yesterday, because <laughs> those numbers would not look good. I'm but not sure they'd be really accurate. No. Right? <laughs> um, there is so much going on in that space. Obviously, yeah. SAP is doing a lot, and so NTT Data is doing a lot as well. Mm -hmm. Can you talk just a little bit about uh, what it is you do at NTT Data, and then we'll jump into some cool customer stories that yeah. you're seeing? Yeah, definitely. So uh, my responsibility really lies in um, heading up our analytics uh, practice or our division. Um, so, um, in that, I'm just responsible for the execution and delivery of all the solutions in and around our analytics space. Mm -hmm. uh, but on top of that, as it relates back to the sports and entertainment industry, um, I pretty much lead our solutions team uh, as it relates to sports and entertainment as well. Um, kind of a second uh, priority, although a very high priority for us sure. uh, as well. Because it's, um, it's, it's such an area where we're spending a lot of time and innovation uh, building out new solutions in that space. And it's such a it just gets people's attention, right? I mean, Very much we so. love our warehouse yeah. management <laughs> systems and the BI tools for financial reporting, but right. if you start talking about sports, which is a common interest for so many people and they can right. get it, it's in of interest and, and, and applicable. It, it really is, and I, I think what we find out, or, or what's coming to bear is that um, as we tend to uh, build out additional solutions in and around that sports space, uh, we tend to find a lot of uh, corollaries into the business space. So uh, it provides a way for us to, um, let's say, uh, make the technologies a little more sexy and yep. more appealing uh, versus the standard kind of day-in, day-out types of business solutions that we tend to talk about at, at um, industry meetings like this. Right. You know, year after year. Absolutely. Right. Um, so for so long, we've, you know, we've all seen the movies about you know, baseball, for example, being transformed by analytics, right. cyber, met, cyber metrics. Sure. Um, what, what's the allure for the sporting or entertainment industries? What do they see? I mean, for so long they, they relied on gut instinct and mm -hmm. their own eyes and not really right. trusted the data. What do you think has changed? So I think there are probably a couple of different variables that factor into why they're looking at technology-based solutions, analytics or non-analytics related. I mean, the first one really is um, they're trying to get more bang for their buck out of their players, their staff. Mm -hmm. um, that's really the first thing. So trying to uh, be able to promote or enhance their performance, uh, being able to keep their athletes um, at kind of a top notch or top mm -hmm. level. Uh, so that's, that's one thing. Um, and then that in, then in turn leads to additional revenue streams. So there's mm -hmm. other pieces around the, let's say, the technology spaces of being able to drive customer adoption, mm -hmm. uh, being able to improve the customer experience inside the venues. Um, so managing your venues, uh, managing the experience for the customer, I think, then drives additional revenue. So those two pieces, I think, are what are, are really driving teams to look at technology-based solutions uh, for their uh, for that uh, that industry vertical. Absolutely. And you know, what's, what's so interesting, and I don't know, maybe the, we'll get into some of your clients you want to discuss, but what I find interesting is you have these sporting organizations, mm -hmm. and yet they have these legion of fans right. who go with their hearts most of the time, right? Mm -hmm. And you know, well, he's my favorite player. Derek Jeter's been there, I love him, but you know, right. is he producing? Mm -hmm. um, it sounds like they've, the sporting organizations have come around to where really the data just is going to be objective, it's going to speak for itself, and they're going to rely on it. Yes, yeah, they very much do, uh, it, to some degree. So yeah. I think that, for instance, last week I spent some time at another sports management conference, and I was actually listening to uh, a longtime general manager talk about uh, the use of, let's say, technology and analytics in the field of baseball. Uh, one of the things that he did mention was, yeah, the, the analytics and the technology are great, but once we actually hit the field, then it comes back to the, I'm a GM on the field or I'm a, I'm a coach, and there are some intangibles that technology today can't pick up. I mean, I think the idea is that eventually we'll be able to pick up and be able to quantify and measure those types of intangibles in the future, but today some of those, the technology just doesn't exist. But that's kind of why we're here, right? We're, right. we're trying to build these solutions to, to help identify that and um, uh, provide the capability for these um, sports teams to, to measure things more effectively and efficiently. Right. We talk, we've talked a lot in the past, actually, when I've asked you this question. I think I've asked you it in like 30 different ways. Right. But So what is it, I'm a, you know, a SAP customer, but I'm the farthest thing from sports. Mm -hmm. 
what are the hot new technologies that you're seeing and how might they apply to your you know, garden variety SAP customer? Sure. So a couple of things that I think come to mind. Um, so in the world of sports, we do, we're doing a lot now with sensor-based technologies. Mm -hmm. And when I say sensor-based, um, I'm really referring to an umbrella of, they could be actual physical sensors, uh, or they could quite be uh, cameras, so camera-based data, uh, geospatial related data. So we're okay. seeing a lot of that in the, in the field of professional sports. So if you look at, let's say the NBA, and they've got these new technology called Sport View, uh, they're getting 24 frames per second, they're being able to analyze are the ability to analyze players and, ball, and the ball, um, and then uh, referees on a court. Um, so those types of uh, camera-based data, geospatial yeah. data, are very relevant, and I'll, I'll say why in just a second. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the hard sensors are also very relevant. So in the, in the professional football, they're actually tracking things. Um, let's say, for instance, if there's a collision, we can measure the impact of that collision uh, to then uh, you know, eventually look at preventable measures to, let's say, uh, try to prevent injuries long term. Mm -hmm. So how that could correlate back to a business uh, as, let's say, sensor-based technology. See, so if you look at companies that are looking to uh, increase efficiencies in and around their supply chain, um, they can look at sensor-based data inside those machines and predict when those machines may fail so they can look at maintenance schedules. That might be one way uh, that we could correlate, let's say, sensor-based data. Or video-based data, if we look at consumers and how consumers react to certain things, let's look at, um, for example, like consumer products or retail, mm -hmm. Uh, we might be able to geospatially recognize where customers are going and what products that they're buying based upon where they're uh, placed in a store. Mm. We might be able to do that through sensors or we might actually be able to do that through camera-based data as well. So there's certainly some uh, parallels that you can draw between what the sports world is doing mm -hmm. and what a traditional business might, might, might also do in leverage uh, in that same vein. That's really cool. I mean. Do you think we're just kind of scratching the surface of this for the, for the sports teams? We are, yeah. yeah. Uh, so I, I think there are many teams that have tried uh, to, so baseball, right, was yep. one of the kind of the first ones that went out with sabermetrics and yep. uh, really trying to analyze a lot of statistics uh, and ca calculate those measurements. Um, so we're, we're starting to see a lot of that now in the world of football, basketball, baseball, soccer, as well, even racing. Mm -hmm. um, and that's another story that we could talk about and right. spend another hour talking right. about racing statistics and telemetry data and those types of things. Uh, but, but point being, um, I think that we're just now scratching the surface. Mm -hmm. uh, there are so many things that are coming out in the near future, ML BAM, so uh, Baseball Advanced Media, yep. they're coming up with new camera systems and that we're doing, uh, being able to run analytics against, uh, which are tre tremendous amount of upside for that. Uh, once again, sensor-based things that are coming out uh, in the world of uh, racing. Uh, we look at telemetry data and as it comes in real time from the, the cars uh, and see how drivers react to that telemetry data. They can actually take a different line in and outside of a turn uh, based upon the telemetry data that's being generated by their car. Wow. So they can react to that uh, almost um, in real time if they choose to do so. But we are just scratching the surface in the world of sports. That's amazing. I mean, that's crazy, right? <laughs> I mean, and the, and the fact that though, you, you can see how that would translate to, you were talking about customer experience management, right. how that real time, I know Jeremy's in aisle seven, and mm -hmm. you know he likes Gillette razors or whatever, and we're sure. going to, let's get him a coupon or something, right? That's I mean, right. It could be a direct coupon, uh, mm -hmm. indirect or direct marketing to your cell phone. Uh, it could be something that we actually push out uh, to you before you actually get into the store so we know that you're passing by um, that venue or, um, I shouldn't say venue, but let's say that, that store yep. that, you're, that you tend to uh, shop at and we might be able to entice you to actually stop by and, mm -hmm. uh, on things that we know that you've purchased in the past. Right. So that might be another way to, to leverage those types of things we're doing, like with, for instance, in uh, the in-venue analytics at, at uh, sports stadiums, yep. and it'll leverage that into, let's say, a consumer products and retail application. So where does SAP's products fit into this? Is it the back end creating all this stuff? Because it's got an interface, I'm sure, with the sensors and all that. How does that sure. work? Well, in the world of professional sports, um, I, I would say one layer of that would be SAP scouting. Okay. Um, so the ability to uh, track uh, player uh, demographics, mm -hmm. um, player what we call um, measurables, uh, and some of the intangibles. Um, so they play uh, a part in the application or the user interface side of that, uh, being able to capture it, uh, being able to store that information from a database perspective, then certainly be able to analyze that longer term. Yep. Uh, if you look at something like uh, the in-venue analytics that I referred to, there's an application uh, called um, CEI, so Customer Engagement and Intelligence. Yep. And uh, with SAP CEI uh, product portfolio, they're really looking at kind of what I was referring to before, being able to track customers, being able to, to uh, run campaigns, direct and indirect marketing campaigns to them uh, in real time um, as they're actually in the venue. 
Um, cool. So, um, so that, that's where kind of SAP plays in that space. Among other things, um, certainly the ability to build custom applications on top of, let's say, HANA, or uh, the ability to store massive amounts of information as it comes from these cameras and camera-based systems, right. let's say from the NBA or the NFL, they also play in that space. Um, so I think that they play not only in the front, what I'll call the front-end portion or the UI portion, but also the back-end portion from a database and technology perspective. And that's where SAP's going. I mean, and that's huge. certainly that's where they're going, right? <laughs> that's the innovative and, and simplifying message that I think we're hearing this week. Um, and that's just uh, one of those areas that they're, they're kind of moving into. Well, the other thing too is, and we talked about this, was essentially the teams managing their players. Mm -hmm. That's one of the biggest parts. It's human capital management, right? Just Absolutely. Just by a little bit different thinking. Right, right. And um, so that's, of course, where companies who are not in the sports industries would love to have better insight. They would, you know what's tremendous is that uh, because so much of uh, the amount of uh, money that goes towards players and being able to manage players inside of the sports industry, I mean typically 80% of the revenue stream uh, for a professional sports team goes to player and player management. Wow. Uh, we, we certainly don't have that in, in the traditional business. Right. Um, so they, they do spend a lot of time being able to uh, manage their players and their personnel. I think we could um, certainly draw a corollary into the, the world of human capital management. Right. Um, being able to, let's say, look in how do we, how do we measure the performance of our employees? Um, how do we actually create an environment where they perform better? Um, so those are the types of questions that people start to ask. Uh, when they may be able to translate that from the world of professional right. sports over uh, to the traditional business. Um, a lot of professional sports teams are asking questions like, if, if I can uh, manage the hydration levels and vitamin levels of this player, if I can reduce the amount of stress this player has, then I'll get better performance out of him. I think the HCM side of that in the traditional business is maybe s companies start to look at that a little more uh, intently and yeah. trying to come up with ways that they can get better performance out of their own employees. Absolutely, well, I'm going to put a plug in. We're going to be hearing more about this at the um, SAP Analytics and Business Objects User Conference. Yes, absolutely. Uh, in September. Uh -huh. We're going to do a keynote on that, I hope. Keynote, there's going to be yeah. much more to come on this, so right. I know you'll be involved. So thanks very absolutely. much for coming in. We always no. enjoy having you here. Great to be here, thanks for having me again. Thank you for joining us. For more SAP customer stories, please go to asugnews.com. Thanks.